So it's an absolutely stunning day today, probably the hottest day of the year so far. And so I thought I would do a tour. I've got almost everything planted so you get a good idea of the kind of mix of veggies that we do on the allotment in summer. And we're generally doing only things that benefit from cover. So stuff that's in the polytunnel, under low tunnels, in the coal frame and things like that. And things that don't need much attention. So onions and beetroot and kales and things like that. Everything that needs a lot of fuss in and attention is back home in the kitchen garden. So I'll actually do a tour of the kitchen garden maybe the day after today, um, or any, within the next video anyway. And so that will give you a complete kind of impression of all the different things that we're growing. I won't do a tour of Debbie's plot because she's just in the process of planting that one, so I'll do that one early next month. Uh, but most of what's on Debbie's plot is perennials, and so that'll give you another completely different way to manage and plant an allotment plot. So with all that preamble over, let's take a look. So let's start in the mini greenhouse. So this is where I've all got all my chilli peppers. Some of these are doing pretty well now, just starting to colour up. I've got all sorts of different varieties in here. Cayenne peppers, Habarino, whatever they are, hot wax. Um, Hungarian hot wax, all sorts. Just some bit, spare bits and pieces. A Scotch bonnet in the corner there. I'm trying to leave the bottom shelves here for drying. Drying the onions, drying the garlic, and all that sort of thing. So I've got my first disaster. So these potatoes were, those went in first. So they got quite well established. And then those went in second about two weeks later. So they weren't as well established and they both got frost um, the same degree of frost and these never really recovered from it whereas those bigger more established plants just threw it off so under here i've got winter carrots they're all up now just need thinning and here i've got probably my favorite crop let's like a look underneath so this is one of my most important beds. I've just taken the covers off it just to give it a quick weed. These are collets and leeks interplanted. Summer leeks down the middle and winter leeks are down the, down the edge. There's a lot of leeks in this bed as well as the collets and they're both looking really healthy at the moment. Collets are a fantastic crop you can see these amazing leaves you can eat the leaves uh, as well as the um, collect tops in sort of october november time and then the actual collects themselves which are kind of like a flower sprout on the stem beautiful and here we've got what's left of the purple spreading broccoli still a reasonable worthwhile harvest so i've left the plants in Got some spinach underneath them. Got some broad beans here. These are running really late, um, but uh, that's, I suppose, what you get when you've got such a frosty April. So still plenty of PSB down here. This bed's all going to be storage beetroot in a few weeks' time. Got some gooseberries there. Quite a decent crop, actually. This is my main bed of main crop onions and uh, it's going pretty well. I just took the nets off because I wanted to give it a weed. I think I'll leave the nets off it now, but we do get onion fly here, but I generally deal with that by watering in a nematode fruit and veg protection from Nemesis. Seems to work for me and just gives these onions maximum light and they really appreciate that. I'm very pleased with the progress on these now. They're looking really strong. These are the ones grown from seed and they're in little clumps of two, three or four onions per station. Whereas the ones at the other end planted closer together are from sets. I don't know whether it's just me, but I think the ones from seed are looking quite a lot stronger than the ones from sets and again i just think it was that really cold april that set the ones from sets back a little bit 
whereas the one from seed were just a little bit better established. So we've got strawberries and apple trees and cherry tree. And these are interplanted with elephant garlic. They're doing quite nice. These are an ever-bearing strawberry. So if I see any flowers on these, I'll be taking them off because I want the strawberries from these later in the season. They actually taste really rubbish early in the season. But later on in the season, they're just amazing. So then we've got my Brussels sprout crop for leaves. And normally this doesn't go to seed so early. It normally goes to seed sort of August time. But I'm not worried about it because I want to put another bed of carrots in. And so these have just come in time for me to do that. I'm always changing my plans though, just to reflect what actually happens rather than what I plan to happen. So um, yeah, this bed's coming out and obviously all that calabrese is coming out as well. And so another bed of winter carrots there. And then in here, one of my absolute favorite crops, doesn't look much at the moment, but this is golden purslane. And in that end there, there's golden purslane grown from sown direct. It's way behind this, but uh, it's a lot easier to sow it direct than it is to rear it from seed in modules. It really doesn't like being transplanted. But anyway, it's coming on well. It's not far off being ready for its first pick. And once you start picking it, you basically just pinch out the main stem. Uh, it just throws up new side shoots and you can kind of see that happening already so there you can see if i took out that main stem there these side shoots would come uh, pretty quickly actually we've got more main crop onions and it's exactly the same story here these are from sets not doing quite as well as the ones from seed down there and then this is the almost all the onions so these are again Main crop onions from sets. Again, similar sort of story, a bit behind. And these are interplanted with parsnips. And the parsnips are just coming through. So I'm just giving the bed a weed now because I can actually see the parsnips rather than the weeds. And this bed was a few weeks later. And so there's not many parsnip seeds coming, but there's just a few there. Maybe you can see those. So when I'm trying to choose interplants, I'm always looking for things that are complementary to each other. So shallow rooted onions with deep rooted parsnips, parsnips, little tiny seeds when the onions are quite big. Parsnips do most of their growing from sort of the August through to sort of October time. Uh, and the onions won't be there from August to October. So I think it's a good interplant. I really um, can't bear to see a bed that's sort of empty for most of the time it's growing. So these are my second early strawberries. These were under a cold frame. They're no longer under a cold frame, obviously, because they just don't need it anymore. Um, these are interplanted with garlic. Again, I think it's a great interplant. Garlic doesn't really get in the way of the strawberries. The strawberries don't really get in the way of the garlic. All my hanging baskets, which are my first early strawberries, these are all out here now. They were in the polytunnel for most of their life, but it's warm enough now for them to be outside. In fact, it's too warm in the polytunnel for them. And it uh, just gives me a bit more space in the polytunnel, as you'll see in a minute. So under this little frame, I've got some kales at that end and the shoot at this end. And this was a low tunnel until the middle of April and just gave everything a bit of protection so you can see the beetroot doing really nicely they're coming on bulbing up well and so these are interplanted with a summer salad onion so they're not a storage onion they're just a really sweet onion for use in salads i actually find it's really difficult to get good spring onions in sort of the august september time scale so these are the ones that we're going to be using for that period and then let's take a quick look at this There's kale. Beautiful red kales in here. Um, I can't remember the variety name actually of these. I'll put it up as an overlay. And then this is Pentland Brig down the center. And then a different variety of uh, red curly kale here. 
We've got a lot of kale at home as well, but uh, we get through quite a lot of kale in summer. It's quite a popular crop, and we've just got this interplanted with radish, which is ready for harvest on Sunday, a couple of days' time. And I've got some lovely peas here. These were also under a low tunnel until the middle of April. That's what's allowed them to uh, get away nice and strong. And we've got loads of peas on here now and loads more flowers. You can't see that many peas because I'm always eating them, but uh, if I just kind of rummage around a little bit, you'll see them here. These are monge too at this end, sugar snap at that end. And here we've got main crop shallots and these are interplanted with spring onions and uh, they only went in yesterday and so they're all a bit floppy and then we've got the asparagus this bed is four years old now and it's interplanted with spring onions again similar story with the interplant deep rooted asparagus shallow rooted onions don't get in each other's way and there we've got peas being harvested for the shoots but they're just growing so fast now can't keep up with them so I'm going to be taking these out and putting bustles, sprouts and collets in this bed. So that's uh, one harvest away. And then another little low tunnel with my early kale crop. So this is all looking really beautiful. We've got uh, dazzling blue at this end. And just Carvalho Nero, I think. And then Black Magic and more dazzling blue. And what you'll see here is why I call it my early kale crop because some of it is starting to go to seed and that's what happens when you start kale in January. It will run to seed but you get a massive harvest off it between well we started harvesting this uh, back sort of the beginning of May and we'll be harvesting this continuously then until I should think about August, September time. It won't grow over winter though, but we'll put, we'll have other beds for over winter. And then we interplanted into this one, again, some more beetroot. And that again, is coming on quite nicely. A bit behind the other stuff because it's been out in the open for a bit longer. But um, yeah, we want, that's what we want. We want a nice succession so it's no problem at all let me just take you through the potatoes so these are ready for harvest now then that one will be ready for harvest these are also ready for harvest now and these will be ready for harvest but these are going to be baking potato size and so those will be harvested in july and they'll last us through until august when hopefully those are also ready and again they will also be baking potato size Hopefully we won't run out of baking potatoes. We started harvesting our baking potatoes in April, um, grown in the conservatory, and they've done really well. So we just harvested our last batch uh, earlier this week. And uh, yeah, we, we should have a nice continuous supply because this batch is ready um, to be harvested next week. And then these are my second earlies so these will be ready in a few weeks time once all the ones that have had the tops taken off have been used up and i've got another batch similar sort of volume to this back at home in the kitchen garden so we're not sure of early potatoes and by the time all that lot's finished we'll be on to the main crops so I just put my peppers out last week they're all underneath these low tunnels and they're looking quite good They'll start throwing side shoots out pretty soon, as soon as they've got nicely settled in. Uh, they're well supported with good canes. We've got some salad onions in that bed and some lettuces here, but these will all be harvested over the next few weeks. And then the peppers will basically have the beds to themselves and they'll look like this. And I like it like this really with no interplants for the peppers, just because of the watering. It's hard under these low color covers to keep um, an, an interplanted crop, crop properly watered. Um, the peppers aren't too bad, they're fairly drought tolerant and um, I can just obviously water the root zone of the peppers. But uh, if I had to water the whole of these beds, 
all through summer that would be a lot of watering so here's another pepper bed this one's interplanted right now just with turnips and radish just because they were interplanted into the previous spinach crop so uh, just needs must but they'll be out within a week or so and this is the last of the pepper beds all looking fine happy with them all and a lovely day like today these are all on their vent settings so let's take a look in the polytunnel and I've got a lot of space in here a lot more space than I normally do at this time of year and that's because I'm just relaxing I want a place to be able to sit and I've also got my shade up here now because it's getting really warm in here so uh, it's uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit 32.6 degrees centigrade and it's only 11 o'clock in the morning it's plenty warm enough in here now and there's good light levels in here even with the shade up so yeah let's just start so I basically just got some carrots just germinating in here I've got loads of carrots outside in these containers as well so most of my summer carrots are going to be from containers and then the autumn and winter ones are going to be from the ground out here had my early onions you can see there's just a few there waiting to be harvested next week and then we'll switch over to the second early onions those are down here they're looking pretty good got some garlic there some red onions here and some more early onions here and these are tough ball overwintered onions don't keep very well but tough balls seem to keep really uh, the, the best you can get them so we'll be harvesting these in june and we'll be eating them until early august when the main crop onions are ready so i've got courgettes in here they're doing quite nicely some decent sized courgettes on here we've been harvesting these for about three weeks now the plants really can probably go outside they're uh, it's warm enough now for them again some good sized ones here i've just planted my main crop courgettes outside here and uh, they're just in these little bubble wrap tents just for the first few days just while they harden off completely and then i'll remove these which i'll be really happy about because they are really ugly first early french beans these are cobra and i've got some more growing here lots of flowers coming on these now so i'm uh, really excited so these i should be harvesting these before the end of june and then i'll switch over to my dwarf french beans and then the uh, ones that i'm planting out this week in the back kitchen garden they're the main crop ones so they will see us through and I've got some beetroot here it's coming on quite well this is my first early crop we've still got a lot of beetroot in store so we're not in a massive rush for this but it's all coming along well really lovely leaf growth on this as well which is probably no surprise given it's in the polytunnel but really the main focus of the polytunnel now is switching to the tomatoes and soon the cucumbers so I've got tomatoes all the way down the edges here and soon when that calories comes out there'll be cucumbers at the end there and then more tomatoes down here and cucumbers when the beetroot comes out and then we've got some celery here celery loves it in a polytunnel so I am having a go with some celeriac because I figure if celery loves it celeriac should love it we've got some more tomatoes down there and some more tomatoes down there I do all my tomatoes on strings and I just clip the string at the base here and then I start winding the plant around the string and every foot or so maybe two feet I just pop another clip on just to be sure got a little bit of parsley down here and you'll see all these little interplants I've got got some leeks at the back here I've got some spinach down there and some golden beetroot here and some carrots here and some leeks here and some lettuces here these are all just like little experimental crops um, I'm trying to understand more about what does well in a polytunnel 
in summer and what doesn't just for my ebook so i'm just doing the sort of research on that topic right now and i've kind of got a long-term plan in mind but that's for another video so all the little calabrese in here as well calabrese does splendidly in a polytunnel um, and the leaves are amazing absolutely beautiful really tender and obviously very prolific this whole bed was uh, calabrese last week got a few tomatoes slightly earlier ones in containers a few carrots down the back there just some seedlings waiting to go out some squash uh, some sweet corn some more celeriac some more bustle sprouts most of my bustle sprouts are under this little net here i don't know if you can see them but there's not much to see just little sprout plants so that i think is pretty much it for the tunnel as i said i've got my cover up here this is just a mylar blanket it's kind of semi permeable to the light it just it's fantastic to sit under here on a summer's day it's actually nicer than being outside i've got my first batch of crown prince squash and sweet corn underneath this fleece just because i haven't hardened it off and it's still quite cold at night um, so they'll just stay under there for about a week and then that will come off and then progressively as i harvest these early onions and the early garlic i will be planting this whole bed up with crown prince squash um, and sweet corn down here my little wildlife border it's looking quite nice i've got a little cherry tree here that's trained to the fence and i'm hoping to get a reasonably good cherry crop off this one got lots of flowers down here I've got perennial kale this uh, big sprawling plant looks kind of beautiful but i think it's coming out this year so i've got a new one growing down here to replace it loads more flowers got a little pear tree here got this little pallet planting area here that's full of alpines these are all my cold frame tops down here got a plum tree that's not yet given me a single plum and a thornless blackberry and a couple of apple trees and then another perennial kale plant that is replacing the one that was attached to this stake that was right up here and i think this is a laburnum bush and uh, it's just about to come out in flower and when it does this bush will be absolutely covered from head to toe or root to whatever um, with hoverflies and a lot of those find their way into my polytunnel and that's brilliant because hoverflies love aphids and then last but not least we've got the ochre in containers and this gives you a good idea of what uh, my allotment plot would look like if it wasn't weeded for a couple of months but the ochre are doing great so if you want to know a little bit more about the way that I garden and also find loads more relevant videos, then I do recommend you take a little look at my ebook. You can find it by just looking in the description of this video or following the link gardening-ebook.info. And there's loads of stuff in here. There's all the basics of gardening, you know, planning, sowing, growing with lights, hardening off, etc. etc. There's loads of stuff about growing all year round deciding how much space you need becoming self-sufficient there's loads of year-round growing guides and i've just started working on individual growing guides as well and those are pretty useful but there's a lot of them to write so I shall be working on those over winter. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And as I said, next video is going to be a tour of the kitchen garden. See you soon.